the business for me very good sport director just we didn't have the we didn't have the money and it's very simple in football if you don't have the money you, you cannot make money Edo, welcome to another edition of the No Choftes podcast. It's been a while since we've done an interview. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, but we've recharged our batteries. What well, I have anyway. I don't know about Roy here. Uh, he looks rather he looks rather tanned at the moment. You've been sunbathing, yeah, yeah. of course, man. You know you know I do, man. Yeah, forty <laughs> degrees in Cyprus. So this guy yeah, yeah. goes to the beach, Gathev the mother, Gathemera. Yeah. Well, not not every day. Not every nah, day. Nah, 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 nah. On the he weekend. Says, he, on say, the he weekend. says I'm going to work, rest the job, but then he ends up going to <laughs> Halasa. I know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you back there, and we have a very very special guest on the show. Do you want to introduce our guest, Filemu? Yeah, on the show we've got Marin Orsulitz. Uh, Marin uh, used to play for our team uh, year 2016 17. He came as a central, a central defender. Uh, he was unlucky, I think, because we had Clayton on the show last week as well. That uh, you know, he was at a time where at Omonia, where the fans were losing their patience. You know, so <laughs> they were unlucky. When, when do sense. Omonia fans ever not lose their patience? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, there's, dif- <laughs> there's different <laughs> levels. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's different levels, you know. But uh, yeah, we uh, we've got Marino Orsilitz. I, I think we're going to have a, a very interesting um, interview because other than his time at Omonia, we're going to have him as a spy to analyze Dinamo to us, give us pen and paper everything about Dinamo. We can talk a bit about the Euro. We can talk about his new chapter in his career because he's working as a he was working as an assistant. He started his career as an assistant manager in Om- another Omonia. Omonia upset that. And I'm very curious to hear what he has to say because I heard some funny stories, to say the least, about that from Daniel Pranic. So, yeah, uh, I think we're going to enjoy the interview. I hope you enjoy it too, my friend. And uh, let's start. Do you want to start, Stel? Or... Yeah, sure, Marin. Well, thank you for, for joining us, mate. How are you doing? How is everything with you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm finished my football career. I started my new career like a coach, and now I enjoy my my home in Croatia, weather is perfect. I go to beach, I swim, and I I wait for my for new season in uh, inter division club in Croatia. I'm head coach of the club, so I start to prepare for the season. And how See, is he's the... The, he's the one who goes to the beach every day, not me. Eh? Now, yeah, yes. but... <laughs> but he deserves to go to the beach. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, Marian, tell us how have you found the change from being a footballer to being a coach? Because when you're the footballer, you go in, you do the training, you listen to the tactics, you go on the pitch, you play your game, you get the abuse from the supporters. Now you go in, you make the tactics, you make the training sessions, you play the game as a as a head coach, and you still get the criticism from the fans. How is it like? Listen, uh, it was very hard. It was very hard after uh, some injuries. I need to I need to finish my career in 31, 31 and a half. So it's it's very early, and uh, it was tough time for me. But uh, in the meantime, one club here uh, they called me to to be the coach. So this this period uh, between the player and the coach it was very short. And this uh, period, like a coach, helped me to forget about playing, to forget about uh, what happened with my injury. So it was, it, it was good. It was not so, so, so bad. Sorry, just muted myself there. Um, so, so you're, <laughs> you're finding that the coaching pretty, would you, would you say it's it, the it, intensity isn't as much as when you were playing because you know what it was like as a player or do you just go, right, this is how I'm going to do it. If you don't like it, bye. I think, Last three or four years of my career, I knew it that I will be the coach. I knew it that I want to be the coach. I don't know if I will be the coach, like coach, good coach, but I knew it. I was, uh, I, in this time, I start to read some book. In this time, I start to start to think about tactics. I start to think about trainings. I write the trainings from some coaches. So I knew it that it, it will be like this. 
Okay, lovely, lovely. Well, look, let's let's talk about your time at Money then, because I believe you joined in the summer when we signed the likes of Killian Sheridan, Florescu. I think Carlitos joined as well, didn't he, Roy? No, uh, Sheridan was was before. It was, it was before, yeah. Floresco, so Floresco, yeah, sure. Florescu, Florescu, me, Touré, uh, Carlitos, 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 Carlitos
I don't uh, agree with this, what they want, what they do to come to training camp, to, tr to try to, I don't know, fight with the players. This is something what, uh, you know, what, what is not good and it's not good uh, advertised for the club, not good advertised for the country. But uh, I don't know, for me, <laughs> in, one, in one part of me, I like this. So mm. I, I, I don't regret it. And also from, uh, from Ammonia, I, I make transfer to, to Korea where I had good contract. So I really, I cannot say nothing bad to Ammonia. Mm. So what do you remember about that training ground incident? Um, I, I remember speaking to Killian Sheridan. I, I was in Cyprus when Sheridan was there. And it, in fact, it was, I was meant to meet up with him. It was in February. I was meant to meet up with him, but then he had to go to Jagiellonia. He flew to, to Poland on the day I was meant to meet up. And he was telling me, you know, on numerous occasions, some fans had turned up, but on one time it got a bit nasty. Do you remember anything about that? What, what were you guys doing at the time? So what, what I remember is was, I think we played with dogs at home or, uh, or, or something like that. And we play one, one, something like this. And it was second or third, uh, third draw in the, in the consecutive. In, yes. Yeah, yeah. In row. So they, they start to shout and also we wait in dressing room, I don't know, one hour. We stay in the front of dressing room one hour. So they're waiting, they're waiting outside of the stadium to, I don't know, to fight with us or to shout to us, I don't know what. And I remember the, my girlfriend came with the car and she picked us, I don't know, I think uh, Florescu, so ladies, me, I don't know, I don't remember somebody else in car and we went home. But after this two or three days, we had one uh, video meeting. Video meeting, John Carver was coach, Dabizas was in the room, uh, team manager uh, Dimitris was in the room, and 20 players. And maybe Raufman was with us, I don't remember. So from one time, Dimitris uh, phone and he started to be like very nervous in this room. And I said, what happened? And from one time we go out and 200 fans come here. To Knock on the door, go out, everybody out, stay here. Uh, what happened? The motor I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, they start to shout. They, I think maybe it was one small incident with Clayton. Somebody tried to punish him, but uh, punch him. But I, I, it was maybe 30 minutes. They came with something, and also they say today not possible to make trainings, everybody home, you are not ammonia. And uh, that was it, nothing special. Nobody killed nobody. It was uh, it was like, I don't know, shouting 30 minutes, they shout to us, somebody say something, again, they shout. So it was, it was, it was bad, it was not good feeling, but it was nothing, nothing that somebody make something to, to, to make big story about this. Was this something that you kind of expected? Because obviously you know that fans are passionate. Yes, I knew it, but I didn't know that uh, it will be like this. Because uh, one time also when Milojevic was coach, we played, it was Nuno Asis, it was Margasa, it was uh, Skembri, it was uh, Hafez, it was... They came one time, but it was maybe 20 of them and it was very, very calm. Or Marik spoke with them and it was very, it was, it was okay. It was very funny story because they 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 say one of them we play I think in Paphos or, or something like this and it was one hour from Nicosia huh? something like this and before this I played the countries where normally you travel ten hours I don't know fifteen hours uh, with bus or with the plane and one one uh, one fan come and say hey you are crazy like we travel one hour we travel and you play. <laughs> It was a very funny story, you know, and I started to smile and I don't know who was next to me say, Malaka, don't smile. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I need. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, you mentioned Skembri. Um, he's now the, I think he's a sporting director at Abolon at the moment. He's, he's, doing, he's, yeah. uh, he's been promoted there. Yeah, he's, he's done a very good job there from a coaching perspective. But as a striker, I think that season, didn't he get 11 goals or something like that, Roy? He got okay. quite a few goals that season. We know quality. Yeah. We know uh, quality. Skembri, uh, maybe more, maybe more. Yeah. I think. I think he he was a top scorer that season. 
Mm. Maybe more. I, I I don't remember exactly, but I think it's, it's a bit more. But yeah. So what, what was he like as a, as a striker compared to say Killian? Because Killian Killian was another good striker, but they're very different footballers, weren't they? Uh, Killian is one of my best friends from Monia. So Killian, I cannot be objective when I speak about Killian. I really like him, like a player, like a person. But in the cover time, it was unlucky because we had Matt up. So Killian always go on the side or behind the mat or the other side. So, you know, he was not a striker and I think a uh, key striker. So yeah. it was, he didn't score a lot. He also, some games he was on the bench. So it was, it was, uh, it was a good time for him. So in terms of strikers that you, you've played against in Cyprus and the ones that you've played alongside, can you name maybe three or four that you'd think, well, wow, you can tell the difference in quality? Okay, I will tell in Cyprus because I know the people here, they, they are uh, interested about Cyprus. So it was, it was from uh, Apoel, this guy is, uh, who go in Copenhagen. Uh, uh, so the real. So yes, he's a good player for sure. It was uh, it was guy from my Karnaka. He used to play in Ammonia, uh, big guy. Uh, after and, the, Andre Alves. Yes, Andre Alves, he's a good player. And in I think in 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 in, in Apollonas, after we play against Apollonas, they had one very good striker. I don't I don't know his name, but in my time it was very good striker. It was very good from Apollonas. Uh, he's uh, he's old, he he was older. And he went also after this season, he went from Apollonas. I followed this and he went. It was very, very strange to play against him. I I cannot remember the name. We'll, we'll, we'll look into that one. <laughs> we'll look into that one. I don't, I, just I remember game and I know that, ah, it was uh, not uh, Apollon, I have this big Poland guy. Oh, Pierre, no, oh, yes. short, short, short guy, short, short, guy. short, short, uh, short, guy. And fast. Yes. Yeah, short, 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 but very this, fast. This guy was very, 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 very difficult to defend against him. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. Roy, over to you, my friend. Yeah, okay. So uh, you told us a little bit about, you know, how, how you came uh, to Ammonia. Obviously, you you came on the January that uh, of that season with Milojevic as a choice of Milojevic. And uh, it seemed, like you said, up until that summer, from January until the summer, you were getting paid. We reached the final. Uh, that final, for me, was strange because... From the starting 11 players, the seven players, we knew it was the last game at Omonia. And even Milojevic wasn't sure if he was going to stay. I, I really like Milojevic a lot, but when Dabizas came, they didn't agree. And uh, he left because he couldn't work with him, obviously. And then Carver came. So how do you remember that season as far as, you know, uh, the, the style of play, uh, how do you remember Milojevic in comparison to Carver? Because we did have some good players that season, but we, okay, we, we reached the final, we lost at the final, but it seemed, especially after Milojevic came, that something good was going to happen. Was it the financial problems? How did you see it from inside? Or thinking about it now, like going back, and now as a manager, what would you have done different or, or how do you remember that time there? First of all, I think it was, it was not good timing to, to say to some players that they did not extend the contract. And it was uh, bad, bad timing to say Nikos Dabizas is the new sport director because season it was not over. We had final cup. And final yeah. cup, it's, it's, not, it's not final uh, game on the street. Final cup, it's final cup. Yes. If, you win, if you win the cup in this time, you're a hero in Polo Money. You remember how was this game with fans, with everybody, the atmosphere was perfect. Mm -hmm. So, but but I need to be like, uh, like a coach, like a person. I like to be very direct and I like to say what I think, really. So, I now my time when I was in Cyprus, like uh, coach to Money Absedas, as the coach with Pranic, uh, I always, not fight, but I, I, I start to speak with people who follow the money all the time and I say my opinion I don't care what they will say but I think the business tried to make good things yeah. I think for me the business was good I think the business make 
uh, few very good transfers. And I think really, if he had time, he makes something also with much smaller money than Tomonia had now. Because it's not easy to choose players for five, four, three, six thousand euros. Now we speak about Tomonia, we speak about 20,000 per month. We speak about 15,000 per month. Of course, of course, quality is better. Of course, central back is better than I was I was in this time because it's much uh, it's much uh, better level of me. You need to be real. In this time we play we, we had I don't know five 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 times smaller budget than now six I don't know how much. So it it was not easy to make good team. Also Milojevic with this what he had he made very good job. Very good job. But I cannot say Carver was. I don't know, bad. I really like Carver. I, I like Carver training. I like Carver like a person. I like Carver like a tactical guy. But in this time, we had quality for this, for second, third, fourth place. And it was real. In, in this time, you cannot compare with Apple. You cannot compare with Apollonas. If I'm a player and Omonia call me, and I don't know nothing about Omonia and about Cyprus, and offer me 5,000, and Apple offer me 10,000, it's very simple. So Omonia take what stay on the street. And now, of course, finally one guy come by the club, put the money inside, of course the result will come. They take very good, they, they take very good coach, they, they have atmosphere like Real Madrid now, and now I it's it's with pleasure I say hey, I played in Omonia. Because now it's very big club. Before uh, before five days, my my friend now assistant coach of Dinamo Zagreb, they, he called me and he asked about Monia. They they know Monia is a good team now. In this time, I say hey, we go to Cyprus and we we kill three four zero. Mm-hmm. So it's very simple. Also with Milojevic, with uh, with Carver, both very good coach, very good guys. The business for me, very good sport director. Just we didn't have the we didn't have the money. And it's very simple. In football, if you don't have the money, you, can, you cannot make money. So do you think that was the primary reason why, say, John Carver wasn't a success? Because every person we've spoken to that worked under John Carver, they said, great manager, great tactician, great coach. So was it the financial restrictions that stopped us from, from going that step further, you think? For sure, it was about quality. For sure. Of course, we can, we can do better with this, what we have in the team. In some games we make, I don't know, this Floresco last minute in, uh, with uh, Beitar Jerusalem and you go to saint Etienne and maybe you, go, maybe you go in Europe and nobody speak about this. But it was just one centimeter of, yeah. one centimeter of, of mistake. Hmm. Of course, I start always from, for us, for team, we need to do better. But also for Carver, I really, it's very good coach for sure, for sure. You know, there's stories saying that he might go to um, Salamina. Salamina, yeah. Hopefully. I know, I know that he likes Cyprus and also before uh, half year when I was in uh, Cyprus, uh, I met him on Paralim. Maybe he go to meet with Dimitris, with the manager, and he told me and I met him. I was very happy to see him after, I don't know, five, six years. Yeah, and he was a Scotland coach during, obviously, during the Euros and the coach against uh, Croatia, no? <laughs> I, I saw him. Yeah, as assistant. Yes. Yes. There you go. Roy? And, and another friend friend of yours uh, probably is coming back. Matt. Matt is a, used to, you used to be friends with Matt, right? Yes. Friends. He's probably going to come back for Ike. Friends, roommate and everything, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, you touched the uh, the topic when you when you said uh, the coach of Dynamo called you to ask you about Omonia. I was tempted to to ask you about Dynamo. We we're going to do that, but before that, uh, we had Kilian on the show and we had um, Clayton, and they both told us about a story when you and Kilian went to Greece. Oh no! <laughs> and three, Soyle, three different so, sides of the story now, huh? Yeah. And Soyle, Ari Soyledis was there, 
and he, he offered to give you a ride with his car, which was a, a smart. Yes. And then the, you, you called Clayton and you said, hey, Clay, have you got a car here we can use? And then you got that one. And that was like smaller than that. And then Clayton called and says, hey, guys, I'm back. Where's my car? It's like, hey, man, we've got your car now. So he had to go rent the car out. <laughs> no, it's a very funny story. Yes, we went to Greece. Uh, yeah. But it was training and we had three, four days. Uh, yeah. And it, it was not uh, planned. Mm. And after training, I don't know who, I think Clayton or not. Sherry Clayton, I think, say, hey, Marine, let's go to Athens. You were in Athens? Hey, no, never. Hey, let's go three days to, to enjoy, to, to make holidays, to eat, to drink. Hey, we go. And they say, okay. And so let us say, Ray, Malak, I go also. You can go with me. When you come to Athens, I have a car. And Clayton yeah. say, okay, I go with one plane and we come with the other. And so let us drive us. Hmm. So me, two meters, Killian, two meters. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so ladies have big ass. And, <laughs> big ass. <laughs> and, uh, and we go, we went and we go, and there is my car, it's parked here, and we come and it was smart. <laughs> 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 so we start to smile, and really we go from the airport to we to Athens Center, we go to with uh, smart. It was very fun. Mm. Very, very fun. Marine, I'm <laughs> sure you've got some more funny stories that the guys haven't told us. Because Killian wasn't on form that night. I don't know whether he was holding back a little bit. Clayton, the same. But do you have any stories that we can tell them? See if they can remember. No, I just know that uh, So one, one night we went out and we drink. We drink, we drink a lot. And uh, Killian and me, we were drunk. But uh, it's okay. But Killian was a little bit more than me. <laughs> and we call taxi and I put Kilian, I opened the door behind, I put him in the taxi and I close the door and I want to go inside and Kilian go out yeah. from, the, from the other door and two or three, two or three times like this, <laughs> say, hey Remalak, I go, you, you stay, I don't care anymore, I, I lose my touch. <laughs> the funny thing is, I was talking to um to Michael Lufner a few weeks ago and they were celebrating the title and drinking. He says, yes, I, I, you know, us from the Czech Republic, the you know, Eastern Europeans can drink. They can drink a lot. But then you have the Irish that can drink a lot. But then you have the Brazilians that can drink a lot. So you got you from Croatia, <laughs> Killian from Ireland. You got Clayton from Brazil. That's a one big cocktail for trouble. <laughs> for example, in Cyprus, in one year and a half, I went one time out. One time out, so really in this time I was professional and I I stay home with my girlfriend and uh, I live professional life. But these two or three days in Athens, yes, we we drink a lot and I like. Sometimes I like and when I drink, I can drink a lot. So it's <laughs> Sheridan, yeah, Sheridan, 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 Olsen, Clayton. I think <laughs> you know he can drink. Clay, Clay, Clayton is the is is the king. <laughs> yes. but also on the field he's king so. yeah well, amazing player amazing you, player you remember the goal against uh, Hermiotis or, Hermiotis or uh, no no Derinha out uh, 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 yeah okay yeah yeah but he he made it look so easy he made everything look so easy and I told him you know the times I look at you and I said Rema like hey you walk and you can dribble all the team he, he was so so skillful player so skillful player. Do you remember any other players that you thought that the quality, okay, you mentioned earlier that obviously because of the constraints and the financial reasons, Omonia couldn't have the quality that maybe they can afford to have now. But do you remember any other players that you, you looked at them and, and thought, you know, ah, maybe they can play a higher level? Bloody, bloody to re made a, a move to a bigger uh, league, but I think he got lost somewhere along the way. I mean... No, for, for sure, Christophe, if, if he's healthy, he, he has very good you know, qualities and he's very fast. And, uh, it's crazy to speak about his quality, but the problem is he's always injured, so you cannot count on him. Uh, Rune was a very good player. Yeah, you want Rune, and yeah. Rune was a very good player, and uh, now he's... Five, five, six years in the same club with a uh, good contract and he's legend of the club. So this means a lot, you know, if you stay in... Yeah, he's in Jagiellonia. Jagiellonia in Poland. Yeah. Poland, yeah. They, they played together with Kilian. Yeah. 
Yes, and and Hafez. I think Hafez, you you can see the quality that uh, he have, and also his left back. And if you are left back with with left foot, immediately you are very interested interest for uh, for bigger team. And I think he have quality for uh, maybe little league five. You know, Hafez. Yeah. And other players, we were we were all average, like average, not for uh, not for Tottenham or for uh, Bayern Munich. And do you do you okay? Obviously, last year you were in Cyprus uh, as an assistant coach at Omonia Sevda, but uh, do you still you, you used to follow obviously the league? Uh, what do you think of Omonia uh, in general? Do you think they deserve to win the league? What do you like about Omonia? What you don't like? Uh, okay, I like the way how they are organized. They are always play four four two when when they defend and they are very compact. They are very compact. They are. You can see the the the, the hand of the of the coach. You can see the how here you see is how how they are good physically. It's 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 amazing. But also, uh, my opinion that Omonia maybe I don't know maybe I maybe it's mistake. But I would love I would like to see more attacking football. This is this is this is what I see. I don't know because Ammonia. I know the Ammonia fans how they see the game, how they how they think. I don't. I think a little bit more aggression, a little bit more offense, a little bit more risk. It will it will be good. But what you can say, your first, second, second uh, year in the row, you play Europe, and now I start to speak about what is not good, you know. But I can see what I think, and I think he, for my. Pleasure, little bit more offensive, little bit more attacking football. Yes. The, the, the one thing I will say is that uh, with with Henning Berg, he plays a very pragmatic style. In the first 20 to 25 minutes of every game, we never start on the front foot. It's always hold back, you know, maintain possession, to try to dictate the tempo of the game. And I think that's also down to energy because we've seen... We had COVID. The players weren't training properly. Training at home on your own is different to training with your squad. You've got the different kind of intensity. Then we had the Champions League qualifiers flying here and there. Then play, they're playing league games. And over the course of a season, you've got to, to protect your energy. So you can't play 90 minutes, press, 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 attack, attack. It, it doesn't work. So there were certain times of the games where maybe the first 15, 20 minutes or even the first half, we weren't playing in second gear or first gear. That's that's how we were playing. Sorry, we were playing first and second. But when we needed to score, third, fourth, fifth, bang, bang, bang. And that, that's what we did. And that's probably why we went 20 games unbeaten. Yes. yes, it's true. How I see, it's always three block. It's always four, four, two. It's always center and maybe five meters more. They wait in the three blocks. They wait to lose the ball. They go direct to... To cent uh, to central forward and to fast wingers, this Bautech and what is the name? This uh, guy is amazing. This uh, Lesia. Yeah, yes, yeah. he played play uh, amazing game in uh, Greece against uh, who played Ammonia against uh, Olympiakos. Olympiakos. He played amazing game. This guy. What is the name? This right uh, right winger. Bautek, Bautek. Oh, uh, Botiak, yeah. Ah, Botiak. Ah, yeah. you're talking. Ah, I thought. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Eric Botiak. It's amazing player. So. Always is waiting and contra attack, half contra attack, they make perfect. The, the defenders, they make amazing job. Midfielder, they play amazing job. Just my, I like to see attacking football. So this is my, this is my problem, not of money. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we mentioned Lesiak, and he obviously played in uh, Croatia, didn't he? Didn't he play in Croatia? Yeah, he did. He played for Dinamo yeah. as well. He played for Dinamo, very, yeah. Very strange. He didn't play. Very strange. He didn't play in Dinamo. He go to loan on Lokomotiva Zagreb and he played. And yeah. for, me, for me, I like him a lot. I like him like a player a lot. I don't know what was the reason why he didn't play in Dinamo, but now he's in Omonia and he played very good. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, go yeah. on, go on, Roy. No, no. Yeah, I, 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 I feel, to refer, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Since we were talking about Dinamo, would like you to tell us, okay, obviously. You read my mind. You read my mind. I don't know how you did it. You read my mind. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, basically, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about Dinamo. Obviously, we know uh, Croatia is a, is, a, is a better school uh, in football. They've got a lot more talent. They've got a, a bigger budget. But these are the things we know. If you have to break it down to us in a more technical sort of the way they play, 
with, with who are the best players. If you were Omonia's manager, how would you approach the game? Obviously, you can't play attacking football against them, I think. So we, we're going to have to play similar to the way we, we played last year, even though it's going to be two games, not one game of 90 minutes. But still, I don't think the approach is going to be different. And when you finish that, uh, we had Clayton on the show and he said that the fans weren't following Dinamo at the home games because they were they were they had issues with the with the president of the yeah the president. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Has that changed? Uh, how is the atmosphere in in the stadium uh, uh, any? You know, how is this, the atmosphere in the stadium? Is it scary? Is it something that, you know, uh, is going to affect Omonia? No, it's like this. First of all, we start, we start the game. You said, uh, you said now before uh, one minute, I said before we start the game. So I'm player. Omonia offered me 20. Dinamo Zagreb offered me 30 or 40. Or yeah. 45 or 50 or 60. Yeah. So I got Dinamo Zagreb now. So the quality, the quality for sure is on the side of Dinamo. But this doesn't mean that uh, when this, my friend, asked the coach of Dinamo, call me, I say, listen, it will be very difficult. It will be very difficult because Monia now is the serious team with serious uh, manager and Monia now is the team who can play against everybody. Because Omonia now have the quality, Omonia now have the good coach, Omonia now have good atmosphere, and this is most important. I told him when you when you come to Cyprus and you play in the CP with uh, 40 degrees, I don't know, and uh, the fans are uh, behind the team, it will be very difficult. But also uh, in Zagreb, now the the fans because this uh, two. It was not president, it was two owners of the club, let's say like this. It was like, I don't know, direct or something, but they own the club. Uh, they are not anymore in Croatia, because the, if they come in Croatia, they go to jail. So they are in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and now they are a little bit far from the club. Okay. Because uh, these two brothers, they are alpha and omega from the club. Uh, now with this, Atmosphere with the fans is better. It will not be 30,000, it will not be 40,000, it will be maybe 15,000. And it's nothing special, it's nothing that Omonia need to scale uh, when we speak about fans. For, uh, for the team, they play very good. They are a very good team with, uh, with, let's say, two strikers. One play in first eleven of Croatia, and the uh, second one scored uh, yesterday for Switzerland uh, for three three. Marek Kavranovic, yeah. and he's yeah. on, he's on the bench for Dinamo Zagreb. Mm. So you know this uh, Guardiol uh, from Dinamo Zagreb. He played first eleven Croatia. Uh, two three players more from Macedonia. So they are they are very experienced. They are very experienced. They are very good team. Yeah, they play very, very offensive. They play, I think, 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 is the same, but they play 4-3-3 90% of the games. They have this Misla Lorsic left, uh, left winger who scored for uh, Croatia yesterday and assist in 15 minutes. Yeah. And I think he's, he's the best player of the team. They, put, they had a uh, lower mile, the offensive midfielder who half Italia want him to buy. It's, you know, it's team that, like you say, talent is talent is bigger than Cyprus. School is bigger than Cyprus, much better than Cyprus. It will be a surprise if Omonia makes something, but for me, not very big surprise. Okay. So well, we're talking about a club here with one of the best academies in Europe. If you look over the years, they've produced Modric, Boban, Prosinecki, <laughs> Eduardo, Simic, Kovacic. Kovacic. Kovacic, Daniel Olmo, Spain, Spanish was it, guy. Was it, was it Simic there? Was it Simic or Serna? Of course, Dario Simic also. There you go. <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody. I, crazy. I heard that uh, in, in the Croatian squad, they've got five internationals, they've got three in Macedonia, one in another team, and at least 11 of the players in the squad of, of the Croatian national team in one way or another started their career or 
or played for Dinamo. So imagine if it's crazy. What, what a school, what a school it is there. Crazy. But yeah. they, they, how to say, they, they put a lot of money in this academy and they have the, always the best coaches in Croatia. They have the best facilities in Croatia. They have, uh, for example, if they, if they want me like, like young player, immediately they find a job to my mother, to my father. They can stay with me there. They give you apartment. They, they really, they really invest on this. Okay. Because but, this, because this, they are up. Very so they've got 10, 10 youth groups, haven't they? From under nine to under yes. 19. Yes, yes, yes. So it's like the Ajax model, similar. So you've got something, next... some, something like this, something like this. In the end, in this 10 groups, you have 15 or 20, uh, how to say, fitness coaches. You have uh, two, two guys who are, uh, how to say, who follow, just follow every group, not coaching them. And they, they were big names in Croatia, like like coach. Uh, one of them is now you know Jeko Kopic. He was coach of Pafos. Yeah, All right, Kopic. Okay. Kopic. Yeah. Yes, and one now he's the let's say boss of academy. Okay. So it's you know the guy who was who was coaching Hajduk Split, and you know what Hajduk Split in Croatia is uh, one or two more uh, Slaven Belupo, Pafos, and now he go down in academy to be boss. So it's. And he's more happy happy than when he was coach of Hajduk Split. Yeah, Hajduk so, I, I do, I, I do had um, Tramezzani. Is he, is he still there? No. He's gone. No, he's no, gone. But he made good job. Mm. He made seventh good place, job. I think. Sixth or seventh. No, he was good. He was good. Mm. and uh, But now he went. They bring one Swedish guy. Okay. So, Roy, any more questions, my friend? Um, I, I think, uh, okay, I, I, I want to ask him a little bit about his time at Omonia Psevda and uh, some things about the Euro, what, his predictions about the Euro. So uh, let's start with uh, your time at Omonia Psevda. Uh, how, how was that? How did that come up? Obviously, I, I know Branic was there, so he's your friend and he offered you the position of assistant coach. But you tell us a little bit more because... You know, there's a lot of people who are wondering what really happened at that time because they had the potential. They they started from like third division to second division, you know, and it seemed like they were up to something good, but then it just deflated or like it was like a a firework that, you know, it, uh, just went poof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like this. It was like this. Uh, so Branch and me, we are together in... Uh, coaching at the academy in Croatia. So Franic is a big player. Franic play in Ortozi. I played in Monia. We start to speak about Cyprus. We start to speak about football in Cyprus, in academy. So uh, we start to speak generally about football. And one day I I was home. And uh, before before this, I was already in two clubs in Croatia, third division coach, like head coach. So I had some experience with me. Uh, one day I was home and Franch was calling me hey, what to do. Listen, I have something uh, very strange and something crazy. Do you want to go with me in Omonia? So that's the Molako there. Not, no, not without respect. I just didn't know. Yeah. I was in Cyprus one year and a half, but I never heard about Sevdas. Yeah. I used to live in Aya Varvara, but it was. This village I know and other village I really don't know. I was because the yeah, Iowa and that's it. Yeah. And uh, I say, what, 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 what happened? He say, hey, I'm a neighbor with president and he wants to make a good team and the, the players we build paid on the time. We can take four or five players with us from Croatia. Uh, you won't go with me. I say, listen, I like to work alone, but I like Cyprus, Omonia, so that's second division. I say, okay, for my experience, and again, to be a little bit in Cyprus, to meet my friends, to meet my ex-agent, to meet everybody, and also my girlfriend like to, 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 to live in Cyprus, I say, why not? Why not? So we came in Pseudas. It was like, we will be... I don't know, most serious club in second division, like when we come to meeting and when we come there. And we came and really, 
one month, one and a half, two months, I don't remember, it was good. It was good, first month, first salary. And uh, after this, okay, it was Corona. I, I know that Sevdas is village and I know that the club, they live from the funds. It's 500 funds, 400 funds with 10 euros, it's 4,000 euros, two things, and you are fixed. You fix your amount for a salary, yeah? But it was not like this. The federation they they closed the they closed the, the stadiums and uh, they didn't pay us. They didn't pay us anymore. So for me, I can say in uh, I think eight nine months I was over there. I think I take one and half salary or one salary. I don't remember one. And half, so. But for me, I didn't go because of me. I go because uh, with me I bring three or four. Three, three Croatian players and I feel very I feel very bad huh? because I bring I bring them I don't know two thousand kilometers from the home I bring them first time to play in uh, one, uh, one one country I bring them on my name also Daniel make this uh, same two three players with him uh, families they 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 leave here families to go there we promise them everything will be good and from one time they it was crazy but they don't even pay the, the car or something like this. Now the, the petrol for the car. I, I used to live in Paralimni because the president he had uh, he had some villas what he rent in the summertime. So he asked me if I can live in Paralimni. And I say okay, no problem for me. But every day, almost one hour, one hour back. It, you know, it's, thanks to God, it's not about me. I, I I can handle this. But for the guys, it was. It was very difficult. It was not like newspaper in Greece, right? Nobody want to kill us. I don't know what they write. Nobody, nobody attack us. I have a lot of friends now in Sevdas, the people who work in the club. But really, in this time, they were not. They were not. Uh, they were not correct. They lie a lot. In this time, I said in this time, they lie a lot. And uh, me, I said in the January, I think, or February. No, I say me. Guys, you can do whatever you want, but me, I, I don't have power anymore to stay here to listen these stories, to be to be part of something that is not healthy, to be part of something that uh, I don't know. I need I need to see if the players have uh, this from Croatia or other players if they have petrol to come to training or if they have uh, money to buy to buy the food in Zorpas or something like this. So I I start to feel very bad about this. And I said to guys, guys, listen, uh, I think it's time to go. I think it's time to go. I don't, I don't want to say somebody go because uh, Pranic, he decided to, he decided to stay and he decided to finish the season. So I don't have power to say somebody to some players, hey, let's go because Pranic is my friend. I cannot do this. And I like him and we work and we will work together again one day. But in this time I say, I think it's best solution to go. And he say, I want to finish the season and the guys stay. Big respect to guys, big respect to after all these four or five months where they lie to them, they live with uh, 50 euro per, per month with, I don't know what, they, uh, the families from Croatia, they send, he, they send them uh, 500, uh, 500 uh, euro for three, four months to have to just for petrol for I don't know what. So it was, it was not really. Listen, I can speak now lo a lot against, for example, president or for some people from the Observas, but I'm not like this because also, I think in the start they really think good. They cannot count of. COVID, they cannot count that it will not be allowed uh, fans to come in the stadium. But in this moment, you need to be honest. You need to say, guys, we cannot, we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot do this anymore. We cannot pay you nothing. I think it's better to finish. And I think if somebody says something like this, I will give hand and I say respect. Because shit happened, huh? You cannot, you cannot count of this, this kind. But me, I feel really, I feel uh, very bad in this moment. 
Uh, normally, I'm a guy who, who go with a lot of energy on the training. I'm a guy who are very professional when I do like this, but I start to go training just to go. And I say for myself, no, me, I'm... It's better to don't do than do on, I don't know, way like I do last 20 days that I don't care. So I say, no, I go and the guys, they stay. And after this, I, I, I leave branch with the guys. He helped a lot also when I go, he helped the guys and uh, he fight with, not fight like this, he fight uh, with some Verbally. people. Yes, he fights with some people from the club because he feel, you know, a responsibility for all of this. And it was not good story in the end. It was not really good story. And uh, also it was uh, some people before they, 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 how to say, they owned the club and uh, they, from the start, they were they was uh, they was against this kind of project. And in Sevas, you know, three four people if they start to speak with other people from like uh, Croatian camp, they want to I don't know what the fuck the club. They want to I don't know. I came uh, in second division Cyprus and I want to fuck the club for uh, one thousand euro, and, and and I spent three or four per month. You understand? So, it, right. uh, but okay. Uh, I can sleep. I can sleep every night uh, like like a baby. I give hundred percent, hundred percent of me. I didn't uh, make one small mistake on training or too late or to drink or to, I don't know what happened. Nothing. But uh, if I'm them, some of them, I don't know how they can how they can live like this. So it was it was very very strange story, but uh, thanks to God again, these guys who we bring there, one came back now to Asil, one go to Atelos, one uh, play Croatian second division, one has two offers from Cyprus second division. He th he think he will go no. So the guys they are, they made good job and uh, they have a lot of offers from Cyprus. So this means a lot for me. There you go. That's a development right there. Yeah. Maybe too long, but. It was like this. Uh, things happen for a reason, isn't it? <laughs> it was like this. Not there good you story, go. but you know, it's new experience again. Okay? Of course, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, Marlene, thank you very much for, for joining us, Philemon. It's been absolutely fantastic having you on the podcast. And hopefully we can we can have you on again, maybe before the Omonia, the Nemo Zagro game. We can talk about that a bit, or maybe afterwards. To, to, maybe, to maybe, it. maybe when I will come to see yeah? the Maybe yes. Okay. You want there's a okay. That's the yeah. Give us give us a call or send us a message and uh, uh, just before we let you go, I'd like to ask you your predictions about the the Euro. Uh, like well, obviously Croatia got disqualified yesterday. I don't I don't think you uh, okay. I can't say you don't expect it against uh, a team like uh, Spain. But uh, what do you think of the? Do you think there's going to be a surprise winner? Or it's going to be, how do you see it? Oh, obviously, uh, France got disqualified as well yesterday. The England and Germany are playing at the, at the moment. For Denmark. Me, yeah. For me, from first day, it was Belgium. Belgium, yeah. For me, from the first day. Now it's a little bit because the Bruyne and the Hazard, they are in, no? And now it will be like this. But this, and they got Italy as well. <laughs> for me, no. No. No, it was three easy games and now one one uh, tough game and they were not good. They were not good. I don't see the okay atmosphere is good. They they go on this way now, but I don't see them in final. I see Belgium for sure. Belgium and today winner of the Germany England. Oh, I hope final. not. I mean, I don't mind Germany getting in the final, but not England. Please, not England. Why? Ray, you you live in England. You work in England. Che, you're Why? talking about England like that, man. <laughs> I can't say why. <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe this year finally football is coming home. Huh? Yeah? What's that? Maybe football is coming home finally. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because, 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 you know, last year when we played against England, Matt sent me a message, football is coming home. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and after game, I said to him, 
Forsman like a football is coming from. It's normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> that, was, that was a nice way to finish it off. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I'm going to let Matt know about that. Well, Marian, thank you again for joining us. Philo. It's been absolutely brilliant. And uh, as I said, we'll, we'll do this again sometime. It's, uh, I've, I've really enjoyed this one. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, it was it was fun. Thank you, Marine, very much. Just one one last thing, a few seconds only. Can you say, I am Marine Orsulic and you are watching the No Choftes podcast? N- no Choftes. No Choftes podcast. No Choftes, okay. I am okay. Marine Orsulic and you watch No Choftes podcast. Yep, bravo. Take. Killed it. Uh, Killed it. Professional, mate. Professional. Oh, big, big professional. Big professional. Big, big brother. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marine, so much. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting me. Anything you need, you can you can count on me. And good luck. You too. Good luck. You good too. Luck. You too. From, on, from on and to you all. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so yeah. much, Brate. All Thank the best. You, Take care. So my, okay. my, my phone just keeps going off. So that's it for another episode of the No Chop Des podcast on the OLB. Hit that subscribe button and like this episode. Tell your nunna. Roy, until next time. I'm a shit like Camo. Omonia, Laos, Procris. <laughs>